I'm Katie. I love emoji. I also love feedback. <laughs> yes. So if I just like not move, I'm good? Okay, cool, great. So I love emoji. I love how broken they are. So even though I have an hour, I do need to skip over some bits here. So TLDR, because computers, we have this thing called Unicode. Unicode is cool. You should be using Unicode everywhere. You'll probably be using it in the UTF-8 format, which is a flexible, flexible encoding format. Don't worry, the puns get worse. So in UTF-8, if you want to encode the character A, you have eight bits. If you want to encode the Japanese A, you have three by eight bits. Because this is really hard to fit on the screen all the time, I'll be using this sort of short code. So slash U means Unicode, and this is A, and then this is A. Unicode can go a whole lot further than this because with this encoding standard, you can have up to a million characters, which means you can do things like this. Here is an E. Here is a, a combining macron, which means if you put the two together, you get an E and a macron. That's cool. You extend this out, you have your accents and your, all your different dots and all that, and it means that with UTF-8, you can cover nearly every language. Like, you got all your accents for French, you got uh, Cyrillic in there. Um, with the Han unification, you have all the Chinese, Japanese, and Korean characters. So everyone can use Unicode to write in their language. And that's great because it means that people can write in their language and send it to your computer and you can read it in their language as long as you know how to actually read their language. But it means the code's not gonna get jarbled. And this works for everyone, except the Japanese. Because, haha, the Japanese, they have katakana, they have hiragana, they have kanji, but what they also have is mobile phones. Back in the late 90s, uh, Japanese is a pictographic language, and because computers, there happened to be some space left over when they were encoding their character sets onto their cellular networks, which means there was space left over, which means they had little pictures, and they called them emoji. E uh, for character and moji for picture, so emoji. So you had these wonderfully uh, 12 by 12 characters, so there's like, there's a penguin, and there's a horse and there's a pig face. And of course, because everything was great, there were three different Japanese uh, cellular ne networks with these things and none of their emoji matched. Um, but this was ingrained into the mobile texting culture of the day. So Unicode comes along and the Japanese are like, okay, can you add emoji? And Unicode went, no. And so they asked again, can we have emoji in there because we really, really need emoji? And the Unicode consortium said, no. And then combined with the efforts of Google when they were first doing Gmail and Apple, we got emoji in the Unicode standard back in 2007 and then nothing happened because it wasn't until the iPhone was released for the Japanese market that there was this little tiny setting hidden in the iOS 3 settings that had the first Apple emoji. And this was great because in the Japanese market, it's like, yes, we can do all our pictures and stuff, but no one in any other part of the world knew about it until a um, couple of versions of iOS later, they're like, oh, we'll just bundle this in and hide it in the settings somewhere and we'll release it to America and it'll just be there and it'll just be a hidden setting. Allegedly, one day, somebody's playing around on their new shiny phone in like Seattle or something, looking around, looking around, and went, huh, I can send a picture of poop to my friends. So they sent the picture of poop. And then somebody else with the iPhone picks up and goes, hey, how'd you do that? And so it spread. Um, poop spread, come on. You're a great audience, tip your waitress. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is 2010, and emoji starts exploding. But since then, the Unicode standard has kept on adding new emoji. So in 2014, 
we had new emoji, including the chipmunk emoji, the satellite emoji, the Vulcan salute emoji, and the one in the bottom corner here is really special. Um, that is because that character is in Wingdings. The businessman levitating is a character in Wingdings and because backwards compatibility, they had to add it into Unicode. So that's cool. Um, 2015, whole lot of new emoji, including uh, my favorite, the Australian smiley. And tacos and uh, burritos, because tacos and burritos, also unicorn, which is great. And more emoji again in 2016, including the egg. Uh, chicken has been in since 2010, so now you know officially which came first. Um, there's also kiwi fruit, spoon emoji, and the one in the bottom corner here is really important because it was in 2016 when we had uh, the first ligatures come out, which means that that is actually two characters. That is a face palm and then a Fitzpatrick color modifier based on the Fitzpatrick scale of human skin colors from Caucasian light all the way through which means that you can have emoji that look like you, which is really good because representation, yo. It, um, also, last year, we have a whole bunch of fun to do with gender modifiers now. So depending on which platform you're on, the haircut is normally female. What you should be doing is explicitly defining it as female, which in your mobile phones it'll do automatically, but if you change it to the male modifier, and put them together, it changes to male. So it means that you can make sure that the emoji you're sending is what you intend, which is great, because I have an entire thing coming up about how this has fixed a whole lot of problems. Um, also, you can have uh, combining sets, so families and couples, where if you split them out, it's man, heart, man, and then it goes together into one. Um, and you can also have flags which is great because uh, guess how many emoji this is? How many emoji are on the screen right now? One? No, this is two because it is a U and a K and you put it together and you get the UK flag. That's cool. Um, you know what's also cool? You can use uh, emoji natively in a whole lot of programming languages now, which is great. Um, in Python, you can use uh, Unicode data. So I'm a Python programmer. Um, you can import Unicode data and you can get it to tell you what the Unicode character is. So here it is a snake and then using an escape sequence you can explicitly spell out the character and it'll return snake. Um, and you can also go uh, to the UTF-8 uh, yeah, UTF encoding and then back again. And in Ruby you can do a similar thing where you can put in just the slash U code and it gives you the emoji and then you can go back again. Uh, if you want to go by string name in uh, Ruby, you do need to use G emoji, which is GitHub's emoji package. And then you can have gemstone and you can go back to the actual gem. You can also do this in PHP, if anyone here is a PHP dev, um, using the international character package. You can get it to tell you elephant. Um, but I'm a Python dev, so I'm a little bit jealous because Ruby and PHP are cooler than Python just because you can use just the emoji as variable names. So in Ruby, you can have uh, just the emoji equals whatever string you want. In PHP, you still need to prepend a dollar sign, but that's cool. Um, but, you know, not everyone uses uh, Ruby or PHP, but that's okay. There is an entire programming language with just emoji. It is called emoji code. That is the Fibonacci sequence for the first 15 characters. Oh, um, that's, that's a frozen variable and that's a, a variable variable. And then, and then it loops around and there's a start and there's watermelon because watermelon. Um, Emojico.org has all the information if you want to start coding with this. Uh, but there is a very, very explicit, explicit caution if you want to use emoji code. Never use winking tongue out face to compare strings. Always use just tongue out. 
because there is an explicit difference between these two uh, comparators for some reason. I just love that that is literal documentation on this page. So, yes, we can use emoji in places. Yes, you can code with emoji, but this is where it gets complicated. Um, if you remember earlier, Apple were the ones to really bring emoji into the West. There are other uh, mobile phones other than Apple, namely Android, and Android played catch up. And they were very, very rushed because they were trying to jump on the emoji train as it blasted out to the underground local reference here. Um, so in the very first version of emoji on Android, you get some interesting uh, little things. So this is a yellow heart. The picture on the left is from the Unicode standard. That speckling is the same sort of uh, color pattern that you get when you want to describe uh, British heraldry shields, but you only have black and white. So that particular pattern means gold. So it's a golden heart, it's a yellow heart. You check the data, it says yellow. Yeah, yellow. This is yellow, yeah, okay, yellow. Right, this is what Android went with as their yellow heart. That is not a yellow heart. That is a strawberry that has gone too far. Um, so allegedly, someone took the standard literally and thought it was a stubbled heart. The other hearts of the first uh, Android standard included, uh, instead of blue, it was frozen. Instead of purple, it was sweaty weeping. They fixed it since, but when, when you want to send someone a yellow heart and they get this, and you can't see that, yeah. And you thought the eggplant emoji was wrong. Uh, depending on which phone you're using or which computer you're using, the uh, emoji look very different. So, this is the flushed face emoji. The first three look like the face someone would say where it's like, oh, I, I just missed the train or something. And the last one looks like it's like, oh, you got me some flowers. But that's the same character. Just those little subtle variations in how it's depicted can make the meaning change so much. This emoji, this is hugging. Everything apart from the one at the end looks like microservices. <laughs> that is hugging. That is wanting to dance along. But it gets worse. These are all revolving hearts. One of those things does not look like the others. Ah, this is a fun one. So, You've been to a couple of talks already today. When you clap, you normally put your two palms together and bash them against each other repeatedly to make a noise. The one on the end here is the original Windows clapping emoji. I'm not sure whether anyone's actually tried to make a noise <laughs> like that. I mean, it works. It's just if you've got rings or whatever, just be careful. Um, oh, a new one that I just saw pointed out on Twitter in the last couple of days. This is a horse. The one on the end is Samsung, it looks like a cow. <laughs> Very happy cow, but still not a horse. Um, oh, anyone want to take a guess at what this emoji is? Blonde. Blonde. Yeah, at least one of those is a ginger. <laughs> um, but it's not just the differences in between the different platforms here. You get stuff like this. One of these is grinning with smiling eyes, the other is grimace. The only difference is literally the eyes. Now, I grew up in Western culture, so I don't understand the uh, manga Japanese uh, relevance of having the eyes open or closed, because the one on the left is grinning, the one on the right is grimace, and the only difference is those eyes. So, if I see this, it's just like, what did I do, as opposed to really happy? 
So all these kind of differences, it's all fun. So you know what you need to be able to do? You need to have explicit documentation of how to add more of these into the Unicode standard. And luckily, there is a wonderful page that you can fill in to submit a proposal for new emoji. These are the things that will get you into the Unicode standard. If you are adding a symbol for backwards compatibility, the top row here is from Yahoo Messenger. Who remembers Yahoo Messenger? The cowboy emoji in Yahoo Messenger uh, wasn't in the Unicode standard until someone said, hey, we need backwards compatibility. So now we have a cowboy emoji. Pretty sure that's also why we have a clown. Sorry. Um, completeness is another standard, another reason why you need to have in the standard. Um, until Unicode 8, there wasn't the full zodiac set of animals to go with the zodiac symbols. So that's how we got the scorpion, the Scorpio. Um, also, if it's frequently requested, um, allegedly a uh, taco distribution chain or had marketing because they wanted tacos to be in the Unicode standard. And it was added, not because of that particular distribution chain with the bells and the tacos, but because so many people wanted tacos and, you know, unicorns because unicorns. Um, things that don't count. So these are the things that you can't get in Unicode ever. Sorry. Um, it can't be overly specific. So we already have a snow cone, an ice cream, an ice cream sundae. We can't have a banana split. I'm sorry. Um, you also cannot have any logos or brands, even though Apple's uh, personal computer, watch, headphone, and laptop just happen to look like Apple products. Oh, and there's no way that there'd ever be like a Vulcan sign or anything in the Unicode standard, right? Um, also, there can't be any memes. Sorry. Uh, but you can have at least four different types of timekeeping devices, and yet there's no Big Ben emoji. I don't know. Um, as all these new emoji are coming in, though, you have to think about backwards compatibility, because depending on whether you have a new system or an old system, all the new emoji can just show up as a replacement character. This is also a concept that has a Japanese name that I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of. It's called Mojibake, but I call it Mojibake because I'm a Westerner and I have a weird accent anyway. Um, if you have an older mobile device or an older laptop, you end up getting the replacement character or rectangles or nothing when you try to view the newer emoji. And this is where it comes to the, hey, I did original research here. So I do some public speaking a little bit. This is the 14th time I've given this talk. Um, but I introduced my talk as the power and responsibility of Unicode adoption. That is not my talk title. This is my talk title. The power lightning bolt and responsibility cold sweat dripping from face of Unicode adoption sparkles. This has uh, given me into all sorts of fun trying to submit this talk to conferences and then seeing how it turns up on agendas. Uh, first time I ever got accepted. It's like, congratulations, you've been accepted. And here's the title of your talk, The Power, Lightning, Bolt and Responsibility. Where's the rest of my talk title? It disappeared as soon as the sweat face emoji came up. Um, I tried to submit this for Yao Perth. Um, in Australia, and it told me that I could not have a mathematical symbol of cold sweat dripping from face. Um, sometimes it just works, though. Like this is from uh, PyCon Australia 2016, and it works. There's the emoji in there, except when they tried to print out the agenda, uh, and there were just gaps. Uh, but they also printed out an AV helper schedule, which had boxes instead. And this is what the MC got when I was being introduced. So I was introduced as the power square square and, respons and responsibility square of Unicode adoption square. Yeah. Um, Apple conference that I uh, spoke at, DevWorld, it just worked because they happened to be using an Apple machine to spec up the agenda that they printed out. And the thinking face emoji had just been added, and it worked except for another conference where it didn't work, and so I had emoji back in the middle of the printed 
agenda. Um, sometimes they just ignore it completely though, like when they have it printed out on the wall. Uh, but for this particular conference, it was okay because I had with me some emoji stickers, so I just fixed it. <laughs> Yay. And this particular conference, if you've looked it up on, on the website, you would have seen that there's this wonderful two-tone gradient of the purple through to the pink uh, with my talk title. But there's also missing characters in the middle of my description because that's what I submitted to Session Eyes where it's got all the characters in there and in the middle of the thing and they just didn't appear. But if you were to have downloaded the app for iPhone or Android, it would have all been there. Except you can see that the one on the left is from Apple and the one on the right is from Android. So it would have shown up for that platform specific, but it would have shown up. Thing is, I did email the conference organizers and said, hey, it's not showing up properly. You know that wonderful color gradient for the CSS that I mentioned? That's what my talk title would have looked like. So there's some sort of game of like guess the Pokemon Jigglypuff but from above thing happening there. Um, yeah. The CSS to actually make this is really cool because I just make it transparent and then have a background, but it means that every single bit of information encoded into the emoji faces is lost. So good job for changing that because it works. Um, sometimes <laughs> conference venue display boards, that has turned up once, that has turned up as part of my talk title, Warty Man, yeah, thing is, this is cold sweat dripping from face on Windows 8. So I can tell you that this display system for this particular conference venue, I can tell you exactly what operating system they're using to display that. It's Windows 8.0. And with all the different variations, you can drill down to the exact minor version on some platforms, depending on how the emoji displays which is really great when you have your emoji tweets popping up on, say, people's Fitbits, and you can tell that they're running a uh, custom version of Android 4.3, or when you can tell that people are still running Windows 8 when they really shouldn't be running Windows 8, and that sort of thing. Um, I don't always try to break or at least interrogate conference display systems. Sometimes people try to do data sanitization of my content without me knowing, trying to clean it, clean emoji. It's got bubbles. Um, so I went to a conference and it was a Ruby conference and they had this wonderful little uh, Twitter ticker of all the people that were tweeting. And this showed up. Unexpectedly delightful speaker gifts are unexpectedly delightful. Da do did da na na thanks hashtag. That, I did not tweet that. That is the string that this particular display came up with. But if you notice, there's a whole lot of use in there. And if we remember our Unicode encoding that we were using earlier, if we were to split that out and convert it into a character, I actually tweeted that. Because that's the tweet that was coming up on this display. But it decided to take that Unicode character decode it, strip out any of the special characters, clump it all together, and the ends at the end, they're just the new lines. So, yeah, I mean, you could do that if you wanted to clean up your input or whatever, but what you should be doing is you should be using Unicode, and you should be using databases and systems and programming languages that support Unicode, because otherwise you get things like this. This is a security vulnerability, which meant that until they patched it in WordPress 4.2, I could inject a cross-site scripting attack into your website using only one emoji. Would you like to know more? This emoji is the thinking face. This emoji has a code. This emoji happens to be a four-byte character. If you ran a WordPress site with MySQL without strict tables turned on and with its UTF-8 kind of not really encoding system, 
if I added this as a comment, MySQL would drop. Much like we were seeing earlier with those submissions systems, it was literally truncating my input. Which means that if you were to craft something like this, submit it, the page comes back, and then you would say to submit another comment that completed the rest of the tag, then you could have your on-click thing in there and that wouldn't be captured by any client-side validation. That's completely valid in the database side because it's just text, right? No. So that was fun. Uh, from WordPress 4.2, Emoji works because they fixed it so you could no longer do cross-site scripting attacks using emoji in WordPress blogs. Um, if you are using MySQL though, please use strict tables and please use UTF-8 MB4, which will accept four byte characters and not just drop them. This has been your public service security announcement because Troy's not here and every talk needs to mention security. Um, one thing that emoji will work though and has worked for longer than emoji have been in Unicode is URL links. This is a website. This is a valid website URL. Spoonemoji.ws is a valid website. If you enter in a spoonemoji.ws, it'll go to a valid website. There is an entire RFC that predates emoji to make non-Latin characters work in URLs. Because if you didn't already know, there are some languages that use characters other than Latin one. But because the internet, uh, you cannot have non-Latin one characters in URLs. So they have this RFC, which means that you can convert non-Latin characters into uh, punicode. So the XN double dash um, and a whole bunch of interesting strings, uh, interesting characters afterwards. If you see XN <coughs> domains, they normally say Han Unification Chinese, Chinese Japanese, Korean URLs. They're, the entire RFC tells you how to encode backwards and forwards, and it means that people that don't speak English or languages with Latin one characters can actually use the internet, which is helpful. <coughs> I hear it helps. Um, oh, yes, this one. This is a fun one. Um, so with the uh, accents and all the other weird things that come up when you use languages that have like kind of English characters, but not really. Some developers think that they can do stuff like just normalize their input, stripping all the accents off. Cause you know, it makes things like sorting easier, right? Don't ever do this. Do not ever strip your input. Use languages and systems and databases that support UTF-8 and Unicode by default, because otherwise you get interesting things like this that may or may not have happened at a particular uh, New Zealand website recently where somebody tried to enter some data and it stripped all their content. So all of a sudden this post that they were talking about was getting them to talk about keke. Keke in Maori is cake. What they actually entered was kiki, which is armpit. They were talking about armpits and it changed it to cake, which means it made it all weird. And this is not the only example that has ever happened. There's a another example that you may have read about where a uh, Turkish I without a dot versus an I with a dot was allegedly the catalyst that resulted in the death of two people. So just, just Use systems that support Unicode natively, all the way from your application, all the way down to your database and to your operating system. Okay, okay, good. Because if you happen to be using systems that allow Unicode by default, it means that you can have some wonderful system settings, which means that you can have stuff like this, where you can have uh, sunset and sunrise as your AM and PM in your Mac systems, and you can have uh, some, some very interesting uh, changes in your Mac OS settings, including you can change your system password to emoji, but as soon as you reboot your machine, you can't actually input emoji again and then you brick your device. So don't do that, but still you can have AIM and PM as emoji. You can also do this on Windows. So if you can see, there's uh, an okay symbol over here and there's a few other bits. 
Um, all these resources I'll be tweeting out later and there's links to exactly how they managed to do this. But, you know, who doesn't like a performance graph that's just okay? Um, depending on your operating system though, there are some places where emoji by design will explicitly not work, such as in Safari browser tags. There is a website called emojipedia.org, which is wonderful. It's an encyclopedia of emoji. Do check it out. This is the page for the looked emoji. If you see up there, there is no emoji there, and yet evergreen tree and unicorn have it. But you see the URL? That is HTTPS and a lock. Safari explicitly do not allow any of the padlock emojis in their tab titles so that websites can't make it look like they're running HTTPS when they're not. Firefox and Chrome still allow this, but Safari doesn't. That's cool. Uh, speaking of inputting emoji, you kind of need a way to input emoji, um, like in your keyboard and such. If you're using Android, you may be familiar with the smiley face under the enter key, which allows you to bring up all the wonderful blob emoji and you can span through all the different uh, panels of that. If you're running a Mac, you can run command, control, space, and it brings up a wonderful little picker with the ability to search for emoji as well. And as of recently in the fall or the creators update of Windows 10, you can have Windows key dot and it brings up this same emoji picker for Windows. And you can search for the things and everything else. Um, but these are just soft keyboards, right? What we really need is a hardware keyboard where you can have all the emoji, which a uh, London local called Tom Scott made. He had 14 mechanical keyboards all laid out and had every emoji that was valid at the time. And it was big and unruly, but it worked. He, he, the code is like auto hotkey and some Lua script to make all the keyboards think they're different keyboards. And uh, the, the video he's got for how he describes how he made all this work is delightfully hacky. Um, this is also the same person that's responsible for the emoji only network. You can imagine how long that ran for, about a year and then it stopped. But it meant that you could only send emoji and they thought this would be great because it means that you couldn't swear at people, you couldn't offend, but yes, you could. You can offend people using just emoji. Don't do that, be nice with emoji. Um, but in the web space, so I'm a site reliability engineer, so I deal with the web a lot. So I know a lot about the web. Um, in the web, there are some websites that will have soft keyboards within their system. So on Twitter, there's a little smiley face and then you can do the searchy thing and you can get all the different emoji. Um, but on Twitter, until recently, you couldn't search for emoji. Now you can. But Instagram is better because you can also search for emoji, but you can also have emoji hashtags. The regex to be able to search whether something is a hashtag, if it has emoji in it, is so very long. Um, but depending on what you're searching on Instagram, there are some emoji that you can't search for the hashtag of, such as eggplant emoji, for obvious reasons. Um, but if you don't have soft keyboard uh, in your web app and you want to make it ridiculously easy for your users to be able to input emoji, you can use short codes. So this is cake. If I want to enter in cake and I'm on GitHub or I'm on Slack, I can add colon cake colon. And once I submit my message, it'll come back as cake. This is great, right? No, this is terrible. You shouldn't do this and I'll tell you why. This works for Unicode emoji up to a certain point in Slack and it does not go any further. It also has to be explicitly de defined, which means that if you are cool and hip and happen to be an Australian startup called Atlassian and have your own chat thing called hip chat and you don't want to use the colons, instead you use brackets. If you go open bracket cake, close bracket on hip chat, you get a different cake. This is terrible. I want just a slice of shortcake. I don't want an entire birthday cake. I'm, 
I, I can't eat an entire cake. Yes, okay, this is a contrived example, but this is one of those things where it's the differences that really get annoying, because Slack, haha, as well as not updating their emoji, Slack calls this an emoji. This is Party Parrot. Normally it's animated with the head bobbing. Um, this is a kakapo from, it's a mountain bird from New Zealand and it's animated and it is not an emoji. That is a emoticon. This is the shippet squirrel, which is a squirrel with a hat on it from GitHub. This is not an emoji, this is an emoticon. Emoji are specific characters in Unicode and that is not an emoji. And, okay, yes, I get frustrated about this, but if you're a website and you happen to have the colons and such, just so you can have Unicode entered and emojis entered, that's, that's fine, but just don't, allow me to disable your autocorrect. Autocorrect. There are puns and emoji people, come on. Yay, woo, ah, we love you. You're so awesome. Okay, if I enter in a colon smile into your website and it comes back with a smiling eyes grinning emoji which just escalates my happiness, I'm not gonna be very happy about that. Or if I take an emoticon that I perceive to be embarrassed and blushing and it turns into me vomiting out money, I'll be extremely upset because that's American money and I'm Australian and my, my money isn't green. Um, this can go even further where say you have git commits and in the middle of your git commit you have colon de colon and it changes it to a German flag. Or if you're trying to enter in IPv6 addresses and all of a sudden your colon 100 colon turns into 100 in the middle of your IP. Gah. But Slack, it's like, we have ducks now, we have eggs, we have spoon emoji. These do not work on Slack, they just stop. They've stopped their compatibility, they're now two years out of date and you cannot by default have a duck emoji in your Slack and this annoys me because I like ducks. <sighs> Coming down. Once you enter in your emoji, you've got to read it back again, right? On the web, you have absolutely complete control about how you display your content to your users. If there is one thing I can make you do, if there's one thing, one suggestion I can make, enable fallback. Do not allow in your web application system emoji to be displayed. Because every slide so far in this talk has been a picture. I'm running High Sierra on a Mac. I could not show you the Windows emoji and the Firefox emoji and the Twitter emoji unless I had pictures. Because this is how emojis look for me natively. I've been giving this talk for two years. Those last two would have been boxes until I did my recent operating system upgrade. There are emoji here that are actually emoji, but they're turning up as text by default. I have an entire website which shows you exactly how these things will show up differently, that you can test your various mobile browsers and uh, laptops and the rest, so you can see exactly how your emoji are turning up or not turning up for your system. Because if you allow the system emoji to come through, you are literally perpetrating the differences that I was showing before, like from the flushed face being embarrassed or shocked, for the, the grinning and grimacing, you're perpetrating that implicit misinterpretation and your users are gonna get confused. What you should be doing is you should be falling back to something such as Twitter's emoji. Tweemoji.js will automatically take uh, Unicode characters and substitute them in for the pictures, which means that everyone's input uh, display, regardless of whether they're on Android, Windows, Linux, they will all display the same. And that means you get a consistent export and, and view for your website no matter what your user is using. That's great, right? Sadly, Twee emoji doesn't do the full shebang. On Twitter, if you mouse over your emoji, it displays the text. 
This doesn't do that. So I suggest you raise the bar. Raise the bar. Come on, puns. OK. If you want to do full compatibility for your emoji display to make sure that everyone can see your emojis and everyone sees your emojis the same, you should enable alt highlights, highlight, have tooltip mouse overs, and think of it in terms of web accessibility. Because if you remember the Japanese emoji from way, way back at the start of the talk, they were 12 by 12 pixels. Depending on how you see, if you need glasses or if you've got a screen ready, you're not going to be able to see what's going on. So this is the sort of thing you should be generating when you export. What this is, is it's a PNG image with the explicit code for the emoji. The alt is the actual Unicode character. When you select a picture which has an alt and you copy it, you, you get the alt text in your clipboard. Normally, like you're not selecting and copying pictures, but when they're in line in the middle of a span, in the middle of a text, you're copying the alt text, which means you can copy out exactly what was meant to be inputted. The alt text and the title in HTML are not the same because the title is what gets the mouse over. So if I have a title equals owl, then when I mouse over it, it'll tell me it's an owl. And for extra bonus points, if you use your ARIA labels, a screen reader will output that as emoji owl. Now, granted, you cannot do this client side. The amount of data you would need to be able to have the title of the emoji for every emoji is several megabytes. So you do it server side. Twitter doesn't have a server side one. But that's OK. I made it for you. In Python, if you pip install emojificate, it will emojify your emoji so you can emoji while you emoji. If you are using uh, Ginger templates, such as in Django, uh, you can load emojificate, and then you just filter your content through, and it will you uh, substitute any emoji character for the Twitter picture. It will add the alt text, it will add the title, and it will add the ARIA label. You can load it in this way and pipe it through, or you can just wrap your entire text that you're writing uh, directly into your template, and it will convert it all for you. You should definitely uh, link read for a great big blog ranty post that I've made about all this. A uh, little bit out of date now, but it still explains the entire scope for all the different systems and how everything's terrible and how this will fix some of it. Um, but as a reminder, in case I haven't said it enough yet, make sure you're using UTF-8 on all your systems. In HTML, you enable that by explicitly declaring your char set as UTF-8. Because then you get emoji. And who doesn't like emoji? All right. It's OK. This is the home stretch now. The future. The future of emoji. Guess what we're getting every year for, from now until forever. Every year we're going to be getting new emoji. And it's going to be wonderful. So late last year, we got some really cool new emoji, like the broccoli emoji. Who doesn't love broccoli? Also, hedgehog emoji. How cute is that? Um, also, the Colbert emoji. Oh my goodness, uh, Stephen Colbert, no, maybe? Wow, tough crowd. Um, also, just in time for Halloween last year, we got uh, zombie emoji, elf emoji, wizard emoji. Um, there's also a I love you emoji. So there's already devil horns and that, and now you have all the different symbols. Um, there's now a sandwich, because you know. Um, there's zebras, and there's aliens, and there's pies. And there's like, there were 57 new emoji last year. And it's just like, right? Because that's also a new emoji that we got last year. Mind blown emoji. Um, we also got, of particular re relevance for people that are from this particular country, English, Scottish, and Welsh flags. So instead of just having the UK, you can now have your particular country. 
And this came in last year because the uh, Isle of Man flag has already been in there since 2015. Nah, nah. Um, I'm very much a Unicode nerd, so I went through the Unicode 10 spec. And the difference between the uh, sweat dropping from face, uh, the recommended uh, display option for that has changed from something that could actually be a bit of sweat on the side of a face to an anthropomorphic blob of water. Um, so expect to see some slight changes in the Android emoji going forward. Um, oh, another really, really important thing that came in last year. Previously, we've had uh, male and female, so child, adult, older person. As of last year, we now have gender neutral, which means that we're getting even more ways for people to be able to show themselves and express themselves with emoji that look like them, which is really, really useful. Sadly, vendors are terrible though. So uh, the new rock climbing emoji. On the left, we have a rock climbing, a man rock climbing emoji, explicitly with the gender modifier that I mentioned earlier. On the right is female rock climbing emoji. If you do not have the uh, gender identifier in there, the top is Twitter, the bottom is Facebook. Twitter will turn up by default as a man, Facebook will turn up by default as a woman. Extend that out to the fact that doctors are default men and secretaries are default women and teachers are default women and blah. blah. Oh, one thing that we might be getting this year, which is really cool, um, directional modifiers. So we already have color modifiers and gender modifiers, directional modifiers, which means that you can define which way the gun or the kick scooter, kick scooter is an emoji, Come on, that's cool. Um, possibly this year we'll be getting directional modifiers, which means that you can make your kick scooters go the other way. Yeah, that's cool. Um, there is the draft standard that has just closed for public comment as of a couple of days ago, because next week in the US, the Unicode Consortium is meeting to decide whether there's gonna be directional emoji. I'll, I'll be watching Twitter with a gleeful, uh, her nerdiness. Um, not only are we probably going to get, uh, have we gotten new emoji, sorry, um, there have also been a whole lot of updates to emoji in the last year, including the fact that they fixed the grinning and grimace emoji, so it actually looks like a smiling face now with, with the smiles and everything. Um, if you run a Mac and you've updated to High Sierra, They've redone a whole bunch of the animals, so now the bee actually looks like a bee instead of a blob with sticks coming out of the butt. Um, the flushed face that I mentioned earlier from Android has gone from, oh, you shouldn't have, to actually shocked to a duck, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, sadly, the blobs have now been uh, superseded by what I can only describe as uh, an intern finding the gradient feature. And, okay, so apparently this is uh, more accessible to people, but there's a certain amount of, I could have knocked that up in MS Paint from Windows 95 and had a better result. Plus I really liked the blobs, the blobs were cool. I liked the blobs. Um, Vendors still like to have different interpretations of what the new emoji are. This is the uh, face, uh, hand covering face emoji, which for everything apart from Apple, makes it look like a tee hee hee. On Apple, it looks like a <gasps> So have fun with that. Um, and yeah, all these wonderful, not wonderful, terrible, blue to yellow gradient emoji from Google. It's just like, gah. And if you follow particular people who like Unicode and emoji on the internet, you would have heard of Hamburger Gate, where the original hamburger emoji from the Android redo had the cheese on the bottom. And there was a petition and they changed it. Uh, not before serving cheese on the bottom hamburgers at the Google uh, kitchens. So yes. Uh, one good thing that Android is doing though, 
um, with all the different versions of Android that have come, the emoji keep on changing. Now they are going to be adding a uh, subsystem within Android that you can pass through the emojis, the new emojis coming forward into older platforms, which will be good, except for the fact that they're all the terrible gradient emoji and not the cool blobs. But it does mean that a mobile phone from Android bought today with Android 8 will have continued emoji support going forward. So that's cool. Um, the Windows emoji, oh my gosh. The Windows emoji now look amazing. Like they looked like weird, like segments of banana before, but now they look really cool, really well defined. Um, I think they look kind of awesome. Um, oh, and they did fix the clapping hand emoji, which is great. So now it actually looks like you're clapping. Um, one thing that Windows does that not anyone else does is have mixed gendered, mixed uh, color modifier couples. So you can now have a ligature that looks like your relationship, which is really super important. Um, ah, yes, uh, Emoji One is a open source, now freemium, uh, emoji set and they've changed their emoji so now they look all kind of shiny and cool. Um, they were the first open emoji set. They were funded by Kickstarter and before Twitter came along and they kind of look cool now except they got rid of the really cool owl from earlier and now it actually looks like an owl instead of a argyle headwig or something. Um, Twitter have also recently updated their emoji, so now the thumbs up actually has a wrist, which is helpful. Um, but one thing Twitter just did is they removed the colours from the sparkle. So now it just looks like a golden sparkle, and I really like the old sparkle. I'm still upset about this. Um, what else we got? Ah yes, gen, uh, profession emoji. You can now have um, teachers and farmers and bakers and all this kind of stuff which I mention explicitly because there is now an emoji that looks like me, well, just apart from the hair thing, but it's like, it's like I have a Mac and it's just like, hey. Um, okay, new emoji. So I mentioned that the Unicode Consortium are meeting next week. Uh, there's a whole bunch of emoji that could be coming this year, including cupcake, hiking shoe, teddy bear, badger face, hippo, kangaroo, kangaroo, and llama. Um, the badger face is explicitly important because it means that we can finally have Unicode only encodings of the badger song. Yeah, old school flash animations, yo. Um, other emoji that could be happening are some of the uh, emotion reactions from Facebook, including delighted, party, freezing, hot face. Um, also ginger emoji and bald emoji might be coming which is cool. Uh, sadly, no green hair emoji, just uh, the hair color. There's a proposal to have any of the official hair colors that you can have on, uh, I think it's United Nations driving licenses where it actually says what your natural hair color is. They're gonna be modifiers, so you can now have gingers and balds, which is cool. Um, but you know, you don't have to wait for the uh, Unicode Consortium to add your favourite thing. What you can do, if you really want to, is just use CSS to put your sunglasses on the koala and your crowns on your panda and stuff. Um, there's this really cool code pen from Mandy who gets to smoosh together all the emojis so you can have half winking face and you can have different colours on your butterfly and that's cool. Um, and depending on whether you want to uh, go to Google and petition things, instead of having uh, just your banana and your ice cream, if you smush them together and have a, mod of a, a recognized ligature, you could have your Sunday after all that you couldn't have earlier. You could extend this by actually having an official ligature, which is the chipmunk in the hat, which could make your ship it squirrel, which means that GitHub could have an official ligature for their ship it squirrel. I couldn't think of anything that the party parrot could get ligatured into unless you had, say, one of the birds and the uh, confetti or something. 
Um, but that's okay. Because what I did in a fit of what of, on earth am I thinking, um, I proposed that the tropical bird emoji be added into Unicode. It hasn't been rejected. It will either be confirmed or denied next week, whether it's coming this year. You're welcome. <laughs> Although, now I can't confirm this particular thing is true, but all I'm saying is, the list of exclusions and exclusions when you submit an emoji. I submitted this in November in 2016. Since then, there is now a new exclusion factor, which says, exclusion factor K, faulty comparison. The emoji dog and poodle and two types of camel do not justify adding different varieties of the same kind of animal. There is already duck, eagle, chicken, baby chick, all these other kind of birds. So now they're like, no more birds, and I'm sorry. But it's okay, because as of next week, we'll know whether we get party parrot as an official emoji. So then Slack can actually maybe update their bloody emoji, and then I can use the duck and the parrot now. Yay. Um, I have like three minutes left. This is great. So if you are after more information about emoji, uh, emojipedia.org is the wonderful website that I've gotten a bunch of this information from. They are also on Twitter at Emojipedia. There is also the fake Unicode consortium on Twitter, which retweets a whole bunch of interesting uh, errors with Unicode and such. And you should definitely tweet at them because they hate it every time that I mention that they're cool because they don't like publicity. So you should definitely take pictures and tweet them. Uh, the Unicode consortium does have an official Twitter where they do a bunch of promotions about the fact that they are a non-for-profit and they do a whole bunch of work that's not just emoji. But what you can do is you can sponsor an emoji, so um, bronze, silver, gold sponsorship. You can give them money to help them continue their efforts to do things like uh, make sure that tribal languages with written dialects get uh, codified into Unicode and, you know, important work that they do that's not just emoji. So, some takeaways. It's nearly done, I'm sorry. Um, there is a lot of power in communication. And emoji are a really important tool to help further our written communication. But never assume that people will know what you're talking about in any form of communication without explicitly telling them what you mean. Because there is a whole bunch of possibility for misinterpretation. There is a possibility of misinterpretation if you don't implement emoji responsibly. And please, if you're doing emoji stuff on your websites, think about accessibility so everyone can have fun with emoji. Thank you for your time.